I'm Channing McCorston, the container guy. We received a customer order for two 20-foot new specialty containers as hazardous material storage units, also known as hazmat. After landing a deal on national television in 2011, where his team pitched their idea of modifying shipping containers, he went on to start his own business. Since then, he's completed thousands of container modifications for clients in every major industry. Now, he wants to teach you everything he knows about container modifications and accessories. Channing McCorriston is The Container Guy. What we mean by specialty containers is, it seems to be modified, but this comes pre-modified this way from the factory in China. So this specific unit is called a four side door, 20 foot one time use container. So it has four individual container doors on the side with ulcer columns between them. The next container, we'll give you guys a quick peek shortly here. It's a full open side 20 foot. So the entire side opens up and allows full access. You can get you know, up to an 18 foot lift inside of that door. For every hazardous material storage modification, there's always a ton of questions that we need to ask the customer. What are they storing? That affects the material selection of the containment pans and potentially the coating. So can we get away with galvanized or galvalume or do we have to go to mild steel welded, sandblast it, then coat it? The coating that's capable of containment or immersion of the product that's uh, requiring the secondary containment. What is the maximum number of liters or U.S. gallons being stored inside the container? There's kind of two options that jurisdictions require, uh, one being 110% containment of the total volume in, uh, stored inside the container or 110% of the largest drum or 25% of the total volume being stored. There's ventilation requirements because of what's being stored inside of here. So how many air exchanges per hour is required? Uh, does the product need to be stored in, in a climate control area? So do we need to insulate and heat the space? Then if we're having to heat it, then potentially is it an explosive chemical? Do we need uh, explosion proof electrical, explosion proof heaters? That often gets very, very expensive. So your cheapest option is to go with a passive ventilated, non-insulated hazard material storage building, but it only works if the chemical can freeze. So for this specific modification, it's going to be a lube room. It's all oils that don't freeze. So it's just a dry container, meaning non-insulated, and then additional ventilation. So we'll be providing uh, eight vents in this container, four high and four low. The containers will also be painted to the customer's spec. Then we'll finish off by installing six inch Galvalume containment pans with painted black steel bar grating. Uh, so here's the outside of the container. I'll just crack one of these doors to give you guys an idea of what they look like. All the doors have lock boxes on them, which is kind of nice. Just a single handle, which gives you lots of leverage, nice and easy to open. And the opening dimension, 47 and a half inches. So just slightly under four feet. Not the best if you have a four foot pallet, but great if it's a 42 inch pallet going through the doors. This here is the full open side 20 foot container. It's four doors. The two center doors are hinged to the outside door, which allows the doors to accordion outwards. So here we're just putting the containment pan sections together. This here is the end portion of the containment pans. So this will be against the end wall of the container or towards the container doors. So we have the corners all welded up. Uh, it's a good idea to perform a leak test, either with dye or once the entire pans are finished up, to fill them with water and make sure nothing's leaking. The bare metal that's ground from welding, we want to make sure we touch that up with a zinc spray. It's the customer's responsibility to gather the SDS sheets and often inside of them, the manufacturer of the product being stored inside the container will suggest a, a suitable uh, material for containment and immersion. So containment often means two weeks of storage without deforming the coating or the material that it's being stored in. Immersion meaning that's the jug that it pretty much can come in from the factory and be stored in there for its life. So here we have the first of our pans all welded up. Our ridge caps are installed and we also have our side gussets in the pan as well. Those stop 
the sides from folding in. So where the two pans meet, it's like an I-beam once the two come together. Where that, it needs additional support. We selected galvalume as the material, which can contain or stand immersion of the loops. Really got to ask the customer how much material you're putting in there and make sure that we have either 110% containment or 25% containment of the total volume or 110% of the largest cylinder. With this one, we've chose uh, six inches of depth. That provides us 2,000 liters or 530 US gallons. We'll be able to store about 90% of that inside the container. It's often wise to label your total capacity on the side of your container somewhere so the people that are operating and using this hazmat uh, building know their limit. You already own a container, you just need secondary containment. We do have the ability to pre-manufacture and ship out and deliver. What's neat about this system is that we can just stack the pans with the bar grading, ship it out to a customer that already has a container and they can easily connect the three pans with the bulkhead fittings, install the grading, healthy clip it down. Uh, it's a pretty simple procedure. Each containment pan is compartmentalized so if there's a small spill in one area, the spill will be contained within one compartment and if enough volume is there, then it will eventually start spilling over from compartment to compartment, sideways or lengthwise. So this is for a 20 foot shipping container. There are three 76 inch long pans that will be connected together inside the container. And once it's all welded up, we'll be installing them in the container with bar grating on top. Here we have the three sections of the pan laid out on the ground. Once they're in the container, we'll connect each section with a bulkhead fitting. So we like the Banjo brand, made in the USA. Uh, we can trust the quality of it. You gotta be careful, you use the right gasket that's suitable for the material that's being stored inside the container. Another thing to note, they are a left-hand thread. Once we put them in, we also get a chemical resistant caulking just to go over the threads. Uh, as we tighten everything together and just added security. So the bulkhead fittings here. Slide through your hole. Insert gasket, left-handed thread, show and right. Pulled the two uh, 20 foot hazmat units into our shop. Uh, you just watch the bar grading get installed. I'll just uh, give you a little bit of a, a peek at these Hilti clips here. So these are meant for bar grading. They hold down the bar grading there and the head of the screw is actually recessed below the surface level of the bar grading. So that if you're handling pallets in and out of the container, you're not gonna shear the head of the self tapper. Great clips, uh, purpose built for bar grading, the right thing to use. And they're also removable. So there's ever a spill inside this and uh, one of the panel sections or multiple need to be cleaned out. You can unscrew the hex head here, uh, remove the Hilti clips, move a section of bar grading, and then the vac truck can get in here and uh, suck out any of the spills and, and clean up the pans. So in this container yet, we still have to install our vents. We'll cut the holes out before we paint and then install the vents afterwards. Given it's a hazmat uh, storage container, we like to install half the vents up high and half down low in case some vapors are heavier than air and some are lighter. It's always uh, intaking or exhausting all vapors. So yeah, in here we're gonna have four vents high on the side wall and then the door side we're going to do four low so the reason we like to put them high on this wall is if pallets are coming in and they're four or five feet tall uh, no chance of them hitting the vent and damaging it so get them up high out of the way on this end and then in the door end where the door is always open when they're uh, moving pallets in and out there's no risk of a pallet 
hitting the vent and squashing it. So here's the outside of the container, the door side. So we'll be putting the vents, this is pretty much as low as we can go with them. So we'll be putting the vents low on the doors on this side and then high on the other side. So here we have them marked out, ready to cut. These are already cut out and ready to go. So uh, we'll just be taping that off. So when we paint, we're not over spraying on the interior of the can and uh, give it a shot of paint. And then I guess, yeah, we can check back in on this container once it's all painted. Containers are back now from paint. Uh, they're done to the color that the customer has spec. Uh, we've also installed the vents. So we have the lower vents on the door side of the container. And then coming around to the back, we have the uh, four vents installed up high. So this will provide good cross flow passive ventilation. Let's give a final tour of this can. We'll crack the doors and swing them open. This one here is the full open side, so it's got the two doors that hinge and kind of accordion outward, as you say. Here's the inside of the vents here. Yeah, they are pretty much flush with the inside of the door, so as the door closes, it's not really gonna collide with anything that's stored inside the container. And then the vents on the back side of this unit here. Uh, they're up high, kind of higher than what the totes that are being stored inside this container. Final look at the containment pans here. I uh, got the Hilti clips and bar grating. Uh, we've rounded the edge here just for safety so someone doesn't cut or hurt themselves. So here on, on both sides of this container, there's, uh, there's actually hooks here. There's supposed to be a rope on these doors. Uh, it was missing or potentially the factory forgot to put it on so I'll get the guys before we ship it out to add the rope on the lock rod that connects to this hook and that just for safety reasons stops this door from catching wind and swinging out and potentially you know it's a, it's a danger they're a heavy door and it could hurt someone so that's that's super important to have that there. So while we're at it we might as well give you a uh, final tour of the four side door hazmat units. We do have the stock container vents this one had eight of them on this one side but these things only breathe as much as the size of a nickel so they're definitely not for hazardous material ventilation. You want to add these bigger 45 vents um, yeah so just those there you know it looks like hey yeah there's a vent there but like especially if it was a used container, those can get gummed up full of dirt and they're actually just useless anyway. So it's more, these are meant to depressurize the container. So if, you know, if heat creates pressure in the container, it'll relieve that, but it's not meant to circulate the air through the can. So I just crack a couple doors. Yeah, there's four doors, it's all same, same deal. K containment pans, bar grating healthy clips. So this one again, ready for service. Customer can on this partition off the walls and we could separate the types of chemicals that are going in here. Air would still flow underneath the containment pans and I don't think they're planning on doing that. You know, if it was an option, we could build that for the customer and even partition off the containment pans. So there's different chemicals in, in different spaces. When you're closing any container door, or the cargo doors that have two doors, you always close your left and then your right. There's either a lock box or just usually a piece of flat bar that uh, uh, it's always on the right door and it keeps the two closed. But as far as your lock box is concerned, this is the factory lock box that would be done in China. We have our own lock box that it's a bolt on version, but yeah, obviously when they're done in the factory, that's the best. So with this, the only accessory that we would sell with it would be the, uh, the block lock. So it's an 80 millimeter or two and three eighths lock. So yeah, th that block lock is the one you want. It's got the, the drop pin shackle. If you try to use like a regular um, padlock, a lot of times you get you get the lock in there and you can actually twist and to close the lock. So, or if you get one that's too long, if you're able to quit twist and close the padlock, but then you have the lock exposed and it's just super simple to cut one of the sides. So proper lock for these lock box is the uh, shackle, the 80 millimeter shackle lock. We're just doing the finishing touches on these containers. We're gonna put our decal, our logo, which is our stamp of approval.
you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell for notifications. Check us out on our website at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.